Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Lost Art Podcast, that podcast giving a voice to our veterans. On today's episode, we're having a fireside chat with the podcast crew. They're all here. They're ready to go. Raring. We even have some uh, cigar stories to tell you, uh, tell you a little bit about this cigar he's got smoking. Uh, and speaking of that, Vic, why don't you tell us what you got, got there? Uh, today is an Alec Bradley cigar. It is a uh, hooligan cigar. And this is what they call a barber pole. Uh, so it's wrapped with two different styles of wrappers to kind of give you a, a blend of tastes. Uh, I haven't had it yet, but uh, after I get about halfway through it, I'll uh, I'll give you the pick. All right. That sounds good. I like it. All right. Do you have something to drink to go along with it? Right. <laughs> right. Huh. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Might ruin that uh, cigar with a Sprite, but yeah, we'll so, see. <laughs> all right, Mike, how you doing? I'm doing good. Been a good week so far. Enjoying this South Georgia heat, so it's ridiculous right now. But <laughs> big sitting there with a he's chilly. Must have like on um, blood pressure medicine or something where he's not. It's my cold heart. <laughs> I don't say that according to my wife I got a cold heart too but I'm hot as shit all the time so <laughs> and that's just by nature I mean look at this I mean that is true that is true, that is true. <laughs> yeah yeah Krista how you doing great week's going good building the deck we had a tornado wash today woohoo party party <laughs> nice um, what else is going on? Uh, I um, filled out VA paperwork today for voc rehab to try to finish my college degree. Ooh. At the age of 60, I figured I got to do it, right? I don't have anything else to do. So, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to talk us through the whole uh, VA and filling out all that paperwork at some point because, uh, you know, I may have to take a uh, class here in the near future. Uh, to learn how to work on my RV, uh, which I got a great story about the RV uh, yeah. for you guys here in a little bit. So it'll be, you, you will enjoy it, I think. Uh, I can't so, wait. Aaron, Aaron, how, how are you doing? <laughs> doing good. I can't wait to hear this one either. Uh, yeah, just uh, busy working. Uh, like I was saying before, just the work never ends, right? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't do it anymore. <laughs> it up like, like I said, even even podcasters need a break every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm on the beach here, Onslow Beach at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Oh, uh, yeah. Moving on I'm, up. I'm, I back down into the uh, the two meth uh, second Mardiv area here. So having a good time. Got to see some old friends and uh, sit and watch the girls swim in the ocean quite a bit. Um, all right. Well, hey, to start this out, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my my venture from Virginia Beach down here. This is our first official trip going anywhere. This is our first move, right? Very first one. So we're at Fourth Story. Everything was set up all nice. You know, it's everything had a nice little area outside all that stuff so it's like okay time to pack everything up I'm packing it all up wife is packing stuff we're making sure nothing falls over when we're driving it uh put everything away that wife goes to do something and i'm like okay i need to move the the rv forward because i got to put the the toy hauler or uh is that what's called toy hauler uh not toy hauler uh car hauler yeah. i don't know what you call her yeah what is it yeah, it's just a, a, car, a car hitch. Got to put yeah. your tower on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I go to pull it forward. I'm like, okay, put it D for forward. And I start going forward and I hear, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what that was. And so I reverse. Okay, let me get out and check it out. And I walk out and the awning was like, and I was like, oh, huh. Well, that's great. So I, I was like, well, maybe it'll still go up. And I push the button. Of course, there's nothing. It don't move. And I'm like, oh, my God. We're supposed to leave in like 30 minutes type of deal. I'm like, oh. So I had to like drag a picnic table over and I had to get up, get my tools out. And I had to take two bolts was the only thing holding it in. Plus the, you know, the, 
the part that goes across there. So I, it, it took me forever to get those stupid bolts out. It was like two hours uh, of messing with this stupid thing. Uh, got it all out, and then the wife, uh, of course, she had to make fun of me. So it was good, though. It was really good. I was I was not a happy camper, let's just say. Needless to Rookie say, mistake. Rookie mistake. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Needless to say, um, uh, we don't have an awning, and it's working just fine. Just throw that out there. You don't need one. You know, it's that's for fancy people. We don't need that. Anyways, that was my RV story. I can't uh, say it was a good. The trip down here was good. The refrigerator only flew open like twice. Um, <laughs> uh, the kids had a ball. Uh, they were buckled up in the back, you know, playing and stuff. And uh, no, it was, a, it was a good trip. Good trip down. So that's you your know, first. Uh, go ahead. I didn't hear you. What? I was going to say, you, you, know, you, know, you know there's D-hooks on either side of the refrigerator so you can put straps on, right? Yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> that okay, another, so it begs, it begs another the rookie question. Mistake. It I begs thought it the was question, stay closed. What, what did you do with the awning? I left it in the trash <laughs> at Fort Story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's just say I'm going to have to get a new one. We're gonna go that route. So the old one is. In, There's in RV old. stores everywhere, man. There's RV stores. It's yeah, and I'm sure and they'll it. charge me for a new one. I'm sure they will. Probably to install it as well. Yeah. I can. I can only imagine. I'm gonna get. I'm not getting the electric one though. I'm gonna do the hand crank one. That way, it's cheaper, and when I mess it up again, <laughs> I won't feel as bad. Maybe you anyway. should come up with a checklist. Hmm. I've heard that before. <laughs> you know, actually, I've heard that quite a bit more since I've messed up the uh, the awning. All right. So I, I apologize about telling that story. I thought it was funny. I think uh, for uh, I'm not you guys, you could go ahead and just take it off mute because I'm recording with the uh, what's it called? The uh, gallery view as well. So I think we can just keep it off mute now. So. That way I can hear you laugh. <laughs> yeah, you definitely would have heard me laugh. <laughs> but I but I was gonna say, is this your first uh uh RV mechanic project? <laughs> that was it. That was number one. Yeah. Or Removing I'm sorry, R R V maintenance technician. Yeah. There we go. Remo <laughs> how to remove the awning. I'm a pro now. So if anybody needs to smash their awning and let and take it off, I got you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Post a YouTube video. I th yeah. there is a there is a video. Let's I, if if I can remember how to get to the uh, share thing here, I'll I will share. Um, how do you do it? I, I'll share photos. Let's see. Um, I do have I do have a good video that my wife did. Of me not being of course, happy. of course, uh, yeah. Boy, well, she was there, you know, to ensure <laughs> moral uh, moral support, moral support, proper scolding. <laughs> yes, yes. See, that if is, you're all like me, true. when I do something like that, I'm like freaking dumbass. Seriously, you're the big. How the hell do you even learn remember how to breathe every day? You know, that's that's how I, I just start yelling at myself. I'm like, you freaking idiot. You got to be kidding me. You know, it's just Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna you lie. Don't tell you, you, you don't bring yourself to attention, do you, Mike? <laughs> do, you, do you knife hand yourself? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's coming this way. <laughs> like, I can't Sajero, out. Sajero hops now. <laughs> Like, you dumbass. I can't I can't figure out how to get to the video, so I apologize. Mm -hmm. All right. Because well, we, uh, we made a few uh, mistakes with our rig the first we, time. We did. We may, yeah. we may spend Tell the rest that. of the meeting laughing about it if you shared it. So <laughs> probably That's a good true. thing. That's true. Um I've Chris, got a, I've, I've got a co-companion here. I don't mean to cut everybody off. Nice. Every time I do this. Do. 
she sits in the chair right beside me, and I don't show her, so she wanted me to show. Oh, you should just put the camera on on her and just leave it there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, look, she's she's even phot- photogenic. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Looking right at the camera. Pretty girl. Yeah. Because I know I'm. The I hear lots of people, and I don't know where they're coming from. You're probably hearing my dogs, the other two dogs, duking it out in the other room. Nice. Do you bet on them? I hear that's bad. You're not supposed to bet on your dogs. When you fight. I think it was. Yeah, some fight. other, some other guy named Vic didn't do well on that. So. Yeah. Yeah, Vic messed that one up pretty hardcore. Yeah. Betting on dogs? What? <laughs> yeah, you should. You should take. Uh, Note there, Victor. Uh, another guy named Vic. Vic. Oh, football player. Yeah. Oh, football yeah. Player. That guy. <laughs> like, betting, what? betting on dogs. <laughs> I only got one dog. <laughs> but I don't bet on him to do anything. <laughs> All of a sudden, Vic's like, God damn, is there a video out there? Are they going to see it? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> Your sprite is not spiked. Don't worry. <laughs> One thing I bet on my dog to do is jack and shit. <laughs> nice. Nice. So I learned something new uh, today. Uh, I was explained the the VA, how they come up with their math uh, and how they do the percentages. So there is a, a chart that they utilize. So it, on one side going down, it's like... Uh, what is it? The, yeah. Uh, uh, so a percentage, right? So something's a, let's say I, you got one fifty percent, right? So then you go across to the other and uh, you're looking for another 50%, right? So if you have two 50%, you think would be a hundred. Well, you see the 50 up here, the 50, 50 up here, 50 there, and they come together. It equals 75. All right. So, then you go down to the 75% and then you say, okay, my next one was a 10 percenter. So you go to the 10 percent and then it'll tell you to go up. So I added all of mine up that way. Uh, ended up being like 92, I think is what it ended up being. But it was quite a bit. I was surprised uh, it was that much. But uh, yeah, and it, it didn't make any sense whatsoever. And to None your it. surprise, it will be 80%. Yeah. Yeah. They'll round they'll round down to the next one. Oh, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Well they they'll have to round down because uh how many are they getting rid of in the VA? What'd you say? Ten thousand positions. Ten thousand they have to round down now. Yeah. So- <laughs> because I'm a thirty and a forty. I have two main ones that are categorized and I'm a thirty and a forty percent, but my total percentage we're talking about disability, right? Yeah. 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 And I'm at 60%. Right. <laughs> right. So, and 30 and 40 is 70, but my total percentage yeah, that's, is. That's, v, that's VA that's math. That's VA right math. There. That's right. And I thought math for Marines was hard. <laughs> mm. Right. That I almost didn't pass that MCI. But there is no way I'm passing VA math. Yeah, yeah. It ain't happening. Yeah. I got to get my the guy I work with, Al. He's uh, he didn't retire from the army, but he was in the army. <clears throat> but he, uh, I think he when he got out, he was at like a forty or fifty percent disability. But now he he's been out for twenty eight years, I think he said. But wow. he's gone back back and forth with the VA with different stuff, and. He said, yeah, it wasn't worth it to me. But then he really started looking at it and talking to other people. And he's fought back and got his disability up to 80, 90 percent. Wow. You know, and it's, yeah. And he's always going on me about, well, you need to do this. You need to do that. I'm like, okay. But, you know, I don't know how he's done it or what his resources are, but. You know, when I, he's he's a trustworthy, trustworthy person that if he says it, I, I believe that it's that's the case. But yeah. 
And he actually said that. He said, you know, don't don't take no for an answer. Go back, you know, do this, do that. Yeah. Well, there there are law firms out there that that help you. Uh, yes. Well, not just law firms. There are other places as well. But, you know, you can pay some people and they will help walk you through the process of how to to do all that. And they may, you know, they'll charge you however much. And then I guess it comes out in the end whenever they you actually do get a, a higher rating than they get a, a portion or a whatever their pay is for it or something like that. I could be wrong on that, too. I think Vic was talking about that uh, when he was down up, whatever, when you were here. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're absolutely right, because that's what I'm doing right now. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. It really, really comes down to from what I've seen is just document, getting things documented. Right. Uh, I was seeing something the other day and I can't remember if it was a v video or an article, but um, somebody similar, they'd been out for so many years and they just started documenting everything. Well, then it, they went to submit it and whoever their VSO was looked at it, said, well, you got this, this, and this, and they they found this thing that linked them to basically being stationed at this one place during this time frame. So when they submitted it, they were like, yeah, you were at this location during this time frame. And we've had this many people have this many, you know, you know, I don't remember exactly what it was, but this many cases of, of something, right. Whatever it was. And they awarded them. I think they were like 90%. Because it became that's how they linked it service related. That's all it really comes down to. Interesting. Yeah. We had an old friend, him a friend of ours, he's a Vietnam vet, and um he was was I think he was in the Air Force, but he didn't he worked on um I think he was an airplane mechanic or something, but he worked on planes or something. But he um they didn't have hearing protection back then, certain hearing protection they didn't wear. And yeah. he's lost all his hearing. And they told him, you should have worn hearing protection. He goes, it wasn't given to me or something like that. And and they won't give him anything. They won't give him hearing aids. And he's the guy that, um, I don't know, Vic, you might have seen him around here. His name's, he's the guy who's gunny claws on our base here. Oh, um, yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah. Ray Um yep. And we, we play games with them on Saturday nights. But, um, and the whole thing with the VA is they're telling him, well, you know, you should have worn hearing protection. They're like, they didn't give us hearing protection back during Vietnam. <laughs> And that's the he, whole thing. They just keep giving him a hard time about it, but he has no hearing now. And um, is, has he was, tried to go through a VSO? Through the um, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, but it's Every, yeah. They just yeah. Yeah, everything I'm seeing and hearing is use your VSOs. That's their job out there. What's the, v, the, Tell me what VSO is. The better uh, service office. organizations. Yeah. Yeah. See, I never did that. I went to the local Hardee's here we have down in Beaufort, and I went there years. I, I didn't file a claim for 25 years. I waited because yeah. I always felt guilty because there were men and women coming back with no arms and legs, you know, and and so I didn't ever do it. But um, then I was sick for so many years. I was sick, 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 like literally physically sick. Um, and so I finally went, and, and I had been documenting it from literally from the day I left the Gulf and went to Okinawa, and I was sick and missing gigs in Okinawa because I was sick. I'm like, I'm coming, and they're like, Hackler, the bus has already left, and I'm in the restroom, and they're like, I'm coming, and they're like, Hackler, the bus is gone. So I was literally sick from the day wow. we left, um, left the Gulf War. So it had been in my record book from literally day one. So um, when they went to do it and did my claim – there had been 30 years of it being recorded. I guess I got lucky. Not, I, I wouldn't call that lucky because the money, all the money in the world doesn't stop me from being sick five days a week here at home. You yeah. know, so I'm still sick. And the 30%, you know, or 40%. And then even when they did my um, claim, they said, the VA said that I'm at the highest rate for that disability and it would never, ever go up. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm at 40% for that one type of disability and it will never, ever increase. So... Interesting. But um, the ladies at the the a bunch of they were Vietnam vets too, and the Korean vets at the uh, Hardies down here. They're like, "Oh, we'll do you." And it was the AM vets that did it, and uh, mm. they hooked me up. And they were wonderful. So I got really lucky. Why? Why is it that like you know us in this room right now all talking? 
why is it that we don't, well, at least I'll say myself, and Christy, you just said it, you don't think you're deserving. Oh, I just why, felt that- Why is it? I mean, I know people that deserve it, and yay, Andrew, you do, Aaron, you do, Vicki, you do, but why, why, and I'm guilty of it too, why do we not feel that we're deserving when we all know people that milk it for everything they can get. And, you know, and it's not even the VA or VA benefits. You know, it's like when, you know, my wife and I were newly married at 29 Palms, just had a baby, had our son, who's now 27 years old. But, you know, it was like, well, you qualify for WIC. It's like, I'm not doing that. You know, I feel guilty going out and applying for WIC. Why is it we we're like that? I mean, is it you know how we were raised? Yes. That, uh, I mean, yes. Uh, it's pride. We, uh, pride. Yeah, we right. don't take more than what we need. We don't. Yes. We don't. We're not greedy. We're not selfish. We're not narcissistic. We don't um, use more than what we can take. We yeah. or we don't take more than what we can use or what we yeah. can utilize. Yeah. But you know, Christy, you deserve everything that you earned you earned every ounce of that i'm not a marine <laughs> no bullshit you know that, no <laughs> bullshit well it's yes. it's a I, I agree with everybody it's kind of how you know some of us a lot of us were raised it's a it's a mentality it's like hey you know you get what you work for right you earn what you work for um you know don't take you kind of don't take things you know um, I want to say it's kind of a conservative mentality. It's kind of funny because I was, I was raised in more of a kind of a liberal background, but now that I think about it, I'm like, no, they were teaching me conservative ways, <laughs> not realizing it, I guess. But at the same time, it's like, you know, don't be dependent on others. Right. But yeah. we also have the mentality of helping those that need it yeah. most. Uh, and we, and we kind of see that. But yeah, I, I ask myself sometimes, Mike. I'm like, why can't you know? Why can't I just go down to the VSO or, or to the VA and start saying, well, this is bothering me and that's bothering me and this yeah. is bothering me. My wife says it all the time. Why don't you go? And I'm like, I just, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't. I guess part of me is like I don't want to feel like I'm using it as a crutch. Even though I, even though if I did, even if I did get a hundred percent, I wouldn't be using it as a crutch for anything, you know, yeah. but I don't know. But it's true. You're hurting and something's wrong. So. But I, well, I know a guy in particular, I didn't mean to cut, is that Andrew? I didn't mean to cut you off. You're good. But uh, I know a guy in particular, you know, he's actually a friend, but he's a veteran. He didn't, you know. Didn't serve overseas, didn't, you know, just stateside and his disability rating. And they marked him as dis- disabled. So he's got a wheelchair placard in his truck. Guy can walk better than I can most days. Bend over, do this, do that. But by his rating, he was given a a disability, you know, a wheelchair placard. So he parks in a damn wheelchair, you know, handicap spots. And I'm like, really? And he's complains. He's like, oh, you know, I need to lose some weight. I said, maybe if you park your car down there and walk to there, you know, but you take advantage of, you know, parking in the Home Depot, you know, veteran parking and, you know, places like that. My wife says it all the time. Why don't you do that? And I was like, there's people that need it. I <laughs> yeah. can still walk. You know, as long as my legs still work, they're going to do this all the way up to the door. You know, it's, yeah. I, I don't, under, I don't, you know, I guess we're all of different mentalities. I don't know. Maybe we need to go into that. And it's not even just with that disability rating. It's about Maybe we need to milk the system for what the system is willing to give us. Yeah. You know, I don't, 
you know, but to me, it's, you know, like we, everybody said, it's a pride thing. I just don't want to owe anybody anything. And I, you know, it was me growing up with my parents. I was like, I, I don't want to owe them anything. Yeah. I don't, you know, but that's a generation that's gone. You know, I even say with my own kids, and I don't mean it to sound the way it sounds, but they don't understand. Yeah. You know, because every generation wants their generation, the next generation to be better than we all bitch about it after the fact. It's like, well, you don't know what it was like, you know, but. <laughs> it's that whole thing. I went I went to school barefoot, uphill both ways in the snow, you know. I mean, I did. I don't know about you guys. Well, the way Chris is always going about how she's so old, I'm sure she did walk uphill both ways to school barefoot. I didn't have feet. That, but... I didn't have feet. I don't know what y'all are bitching about. <laughs> I didn't have fucking feet. She didn't grow feet until oh, she joined the Marine Corps. <laughs> and they gave her feet. <laughs> and those Marine, Marine Corps issued feet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Up until then, it was horse and buggy. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah they, gave her those, they gave her those jungle boot feet. <laughs> mm. They work pretty good sometimes. So I will say when I when I transitioned out, uh, I had a really good transition. I had a counselor call me 60, 90, 180 days out, and then a counselor call me when I was a year out. Uh, so I, I got lucky, I guess. Uh, uh, my, my, I, my name was on the right list or something. I don't know. Uh, but when I, I told, uh, on, I think it was on my 60-day, uh, I think it was my 60-day checkup that I hadn't submitted my VA claim yet, uh, my counselor kind of dug into me a little bit and she said, uh, it, the money is set aside for you. If you don't claim it, it goes unused. I don't know what the validity of that statement was, uh, oh. but she was very emphatic when she said it. She was upset with me. Like the, the money is there. It's set aside whether you use it or not. And if you don't use it, it goes unused. So put in your VA claim. Hmm. Uh, and I'm like, Okay. Um, and then, uh, I, I agree with the earlier statements about it's a lot of, of pride, um, you know, that, and it's, I, I think it's just a Marine thing, you know, and maybe, maybe some other services too, but I think more it's a Marine thing, you know, cause, uh, the, the people that have that type of mentality are the people that become Marines, you know, uh, but also, um, there's, a, there's a, there's a condition out there called imposter syndrome, uh, where people don't think that they deserve the accolades or the things, uh, the, the entitlements that they're getting, you know? Uh, so it, it, that could be it too. I mean, it's a real thing. Um, imposter syndrome, check it up or check it out. Uh, but, uh, and that may be a lot of it too. You know, people don't believe that they deserve, uh, these things that are set aside for them. So that's my piece on it. Cigar is getting better by the way. <laughs> so, I got a question. Is that one of those wrappers that uh, the smoky wrapper or whatever it was that you, you gave to me? That's not a smoke wrapper. You know what I'm talking about? That was a left-handed cigarette. Don't lie. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Uh, hey, I'm left-handed. <laughs> now that, that was funny, Aaron. I don't care who you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, cigarette. you gave, it, gave me a cigar to smoke that had uh, it. Uh, the wrapper on it or whatever uh, burned or was always smoky. I don't know how to oh, say oh, it. Oh, no, this isn't one of those. Um, this is Alec Bradley. What I gave you was a Drew Estate cigar. Uh, that one was called the Nasty Fritas, uh, and oh, it's uh, okay. by by Drew Estates, and it's uh, much better than this one. You, did I you mean, say this one Nasty Fritas? Nasty Fritas. Fritas. F-R-I-T-A-S. Fritas. What What movie is that? I, I need do a cigarette. That's Fritas. Cigar Weed. <laughs> It was, a, it was a D, not a T, though. <laughs> the yeah, there's so many back. things I just wanted to say right now, and I didn't rush, say it. Rush I hour. Know. Rush hour for those that have forgotten. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Like Gla glaucoma. Teaching Chong doesn't have anything on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, so um, what else you want to talk about? What do you got? I know you guys brought some hot topics. Yeah. Yeah, Mother's Day. <laughs> Ooh, I was just kidding about that one reel I sent y'all. 
Yeah, Mother's Day is coming up for uh, sure. everyone. When this post, it will be uh, tomorrow. Uh, uh, Mother's Day will be the next day. Sorry, it posts on Saturday. Mother's Day on Sunday. Don't forget, reach out to Mama. Uh, say something. Or make sure that your spouse, if she's a mama. Uh, Never expected anything from my husband on Mother's Day. Except for like a hug or a breakfast, you know. Oh, man. That's no, he could good. make me like just make me a cup of coffee and bring it to bed or something. You know, oh. that's it. All right. Well, we all got what we got to do. A cup of coffee. I just we, don't we have. That. Oh, you said we're supposed to talk about it on Sunday. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no. We talk about no. This, oh. I said that uh, this one will post on Saturday, and then the next day is Sunday, which is Mother's Day. So I, we're giving everyone the heads up that uh, Mother's Day is. Show tomorrow? show the mom show the mamas in your lives the the but the, you know uh, what I don't you know what I don't need I never needed a gift I the whole present thing yeah don't need to be buying a gift every time you turn around that's just so, it gets expensive and that's that old school thing too don't need to be having all this material stuff just to have more stuff but I'm a little old fashioned because. Like for like a birthday or a special occasion when I wanted stuff, I wanted like a screen door that would slam and remind me of Alabama, you know, or my grandpa. <laughs> so I didn't need material, lots of, ma- I don't need jewelry and clothes. I I was more about a memory or a feeling like I was somewhere or something. So yeah, if he would say, good morning, happy Mother's Day, I love you and bring me a cup of coffee while I was still asleep. That would do it, you know, happy dough and kiss me and say, Hey, I love you. That that's all I needed, you know, or something. So for something really big and special. All right. Huh? I said and slam a screen door. Got it. And slam a screen door, (laughs) literally. And I don't mean to do a Taylor Swift song, you know, but those are the kinds of things that I (laughs) like. (laughs) You know, I just don't need, yeah. Don't need a material item every time you turn around. So I don't know what kind of women you guys are married to or so. Don't need to take away from anybody or put to anybody, you know, every to each their own. And because I I definitely don't judge other women because I like to really I like to build other women up big on supporting other women. You know, so. Well, that was Madonna, wasn't it? Wasn't she the material girl? She was the material girl. You're right. The original. Yeah. Yeah. OG. (laughs) I saw a meme today (laughs) that said, who would have thought, uh, was it 30 or 40 years it has gone by or whatever that uh, we would be telling Roseanne Barr that she is better looking than Madonna. And it had a picture of Madonna oh, now my and, Roseanne now. <laughs> and actually Roseanne looks better than Madonna. Yeah, she looks like a radish that's about to pop or something. Yes. yes. She's had too much work done. Just let it grow. Yeah. Really well. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's too late. There ain't no fixing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a busy uh, gift giving month here in our house. Uh, my well, my mom uh, turned seventy eight on May first. This week is Nurses Appreciation Week, so uh, my wife is a nurse. Don't forget, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Military Spouse Appreciation uh, Day is the last Monday, which is the twenty seventh of May. So, Military Spouse Appreciation is the twenty seventh. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, we got Mother's Day coming up. So. Yeah, wow. military spouses didn't serve. So, can we get some thumbs up, Vic? And uh, yeah. oh, please tell oh, me it didn't no. work. Yes, it didn't work. <laughs> oh, you blocked it. <laughs> no, I guess not. no, no yeah. fireworks. Now I don't feel Damn. so bad. Feel Man, so bad <clears throat> baby, you're a firework. <laughs> And it was t- it's Teacher Appreciation a- Month and Teacher Appreciation Week last week for Vic, our oh, teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. You are a teacher now. I forget that. He's a teacher. Hey, happy Teacher Month Day. Month Day Week. We take appreciation uh, in, in the form of beer and blow up, uh, blow up balloons. Yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Almost said something. Well, I'm glad you finished that one when you said blow. I was like, <laughs> blow up balloons. Yes, we all like blow up balloons. <laughs> We're good. Happy month, Teach. Yeah. We just call him Teach. Yeah, your, your blow Happy up balloon had a smiley face. Like a, uh. <laughs> 
smiling like a donut. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Amen back. or Oma. <laughs> Sorry. So um now now that uh we're done with blow up blow what we're was still it? on Mother's Day. What are y'all talking about? So what do y'all get your wives for Mother's Day? You help the kids to make cards and stuff? I you still got young ones. Yeah. Nah. yeah. Nah, they nah, are 17 year old. Actually, my kids. Yeah. So Okay. 13 year old's a little too old for stuff like that. She does like arts and crafts, so so might make something. But, but you're yeah. gonna remind her to do is it a, is she a, a is a little girl or a little boy? Girl. Not a little bit. Girl, okay. You're yeah. gonna remind her to do something for her mother for Mother's Day, though, right? Oh yeah, she will anyway. Good. <laughs> Somebody has to remind her about Father's Day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And you want something back, like that new Rockwell, you know, Dremel tool or whatever, right? Yeah, you want something cool. So, oh, yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't have any big plans for the wife, but we will be traveling, so hopefully, I don't knock off what? anything off the RV. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about an awning down, do you? That's true. It's one <laughs> last step. You gotta keep it on the road. You get her a magnet for I, I, I actually bring the sides in when it's supposed to, and I don't rip those off. That'd be a rough go. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Definitely Andrew would. Is, Andrew, as long as you just say, <laughs> as long as you say, Andrew, don't worry about it today, babe. I got the septic system. I got it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know what's funny is uh, that one seems to fall on me every time. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's your God-given right. That's your God-given duty. It, it's been, yeah. So yeah. you retire. You retire from the Marine Corps to keep the shit job, huh? <laughs> hey, sometimes <laughs> this shit job's a little better than the other. I'm just gonna. say. Oh that. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not all at the least, time. At least you can flush these turds, right? That is true. <laughs> that is a good point. Yeah, can't always flush all the turds, right? So does Lejeune have a better uh, RV site where you don't have to haul it out and do all that? Yes. Or? Yeah. Oh, but there's good. a there's a, a a septic thing right next to the RV now, so I don't have to have the poo caddy, as I call it. Well, it's called full hookups. Full hookups. full hookups. I got full hookups. I'm still learning the lingo. I'm uh... <laughs> just text yeah, me if you have any questions. I'll answer any questions you have. Yeah. Usually What's we the... learn acronyms and definitions first day, but okay. <laughs> no. No, He's working on it. I'll do it. So what's really funny is uh as I sit here having this podcast with you guys and seeing everybody walk by. And kind of looking over, like, what is this jackass doing? And uh, so it's kind of amusing. Yeah. So it's been fun. Pretty, Pretty soon, soon we'll come get, up with some we'll kind get... of mnemonic device uh, to remind you to, to do everything. Like, JJ did tie, bring in the awning. <laughs> AJ, AJ did bring in the awning. <laughs> I, JJ did tie I, down the awning, the awning, <laughs> so we didn't have to worry about it. Thank you very much. Oh, you, know good one. you know what, Andrew? We need to get you one of those on air signs to hang up in the background. That way, when people walk by, they know you're on air. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, or live. Like Live, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, here. You know what I'm, uh, and I haven't done anything this week, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk around because, you know, everybody, all the veterans are, are here. They got all their <laughs> flags up and they're representing all their different uh, services and stuff. Of course, we're on a Marine base, so 90% of them are Marine. But uh, so I'm going to go around and just say, hey, introduce myself, say hi. It's like, hey, you want to be interviewed? And, See what happens. And well, then you know, do you know somebody else that wants to be interviewed. <laughs> and then what? Do you know somebody else that wants to be interviewed? That's right. Yeah. There you go. But you know what they call Army base with one Marine on it, right? A Marine base. A Marine base with soldiers on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, 
it's pretty good. That's, that's I had, not I had case old, in Albany. Well, I, I had an old veteran tell me that. Uh, old re- retired Marine was in the commissary a few years back here at McDill. And uh, I was wa- I was in uniform in the commissary and went by. He's like, hey, how you doing, Marine? Da, da, da. I started talking, chit-chatting. And he said, you know what they call Air Force Base with a Marine on it? I was like, uh, no, sir. <laughs> he said, a Marine base with airmen on it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, no, Aaron, when you said that a, about the live thing, I'm sorry. Every time I go on to a, uh, another base, like uh, another services base, I think was I go to the gate guard, I'm going to be like, don't worry, the Marines have arrived. There you go. <laughs> the Marines have landed. <laughs> yeah, the Marines have landed. There you go. I'm here. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> yeah. You guys know what I yell every time I go on at Paris Island? I always go, good morning, Vietnam. And they always laugh. <laughs> really? They think it's funny every time. I'm like, I've done it so many times. I thought they'd be like tired of it by now. And they always go, <laughs> Okay. Well, you'd do yeah. that if I did it. They'd be like, pull over, pull over, Don't pull over <laughs> right now. Ooh, there, yeah, you not... there you go. There you go, Vic. Yeah. 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 Do the like, oh, brother, we're on now in the background, you know, on air. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Dude, that's where we'll the see. big decal on the side of the RV would come in, Andrew. It would, would <laughs> be nice because then I could like literally kind of just be up against the rv and have that big decal right and uh uh, be pretty cool um i don't have that so i've got the fake decal you got a what a safety decal no a fake one (laughs) you 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 don't have any you don't have an awning either (laughs) it's true so if i was sitting (laughs) next to the rv with it uh and it was let's say not uh the best of weather then I'd begin wet. Well, just think about all the natural lighting you have now for your outside podcast. It's you know, always the block in the, the sun. <laughs> always looking at the bright side. I do appreciate it. <laughs> hey, but the internet's good. Hey, hey, yeah, that's it's a great amazing point. when there's no trees. I'm just saying, it's it's doing pretty good, right? This is my uh, this is my shout out for. Uh, oh crap! What's the satellite thing called? Uh, Starlink. Starlink. It's my Starlink. shout out for Starlink. It's actually working. Um, so, uh, Elon Musk, if you're out there and you're watching this, because I know you watch my podcast, uh, <laughs> you feel like sponsoring somebody. I you know what? Though? Use your product. Now, now that I think about it, it's probably intentional. The further northeast you go, the the less it works for a reason, because they they don't tend to like elon too much up that way that's a good point the, the closer you get up north of richmond no yeah north of richmond. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that is a great song by the way uh you guys know what we're, what we're yeah. referencing Rich. yeah sing it for us aaron i don't know all the words <laughs> Come on. richmond north of richmond yeah that's a great song. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the words at all. I'm not. I'm not very musically inclined like the rest of y'all. Whatever. I can't even remember lyrics. I can't even remember my name half the time. You're making a lot of assumptions, <laughs> Aaron. That we're musically inclined. So uh, that's yeah, that's true. That's uh, true. I'm musically oh, inclined. <laughs> oh, excuse yeah, me. Sir. He's he's a teacher <laughs> of music. <laughs> Could I be forgot. my imposter syndrome. But I I feel, I feel like I'm musically inclined. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot my layered. My layered. Yes, you're right. Yes, absolutely. My layered. Yes. My layered. Love that too. <laughs> my layered. Yes, my layered. Finally. <laughs> some recognition around here. <laughs> some rec- you finally got some recognition <laughs> that you <I'm>, deserve. <laughs> so for everybody out there, Vic's going to explain his uh, one foot by one foot. Two acreage. by two, two by two by two, two by two, two, two feet by two feet acreage that he has in Ireland, Scotland, Scotland, Scotland. Scotland. Yeah. the other Ireland. There's Scotland. a difference. We take it personally. I'm sorry, Mike. I totally, I apologize. Uh, I know, I know. That was horrible. Go ahead. He just left. He's he's like, I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead, Vic. Tell us about Scotland and your two by two acre. 
lot that you have. So my uh, my neighbor got me a two foot by two foot plot of land in Scotland for my birthday, uh, and then it came with the Laird title, and I also have the the right to uh, to come up with my own tartan. So uh, I'm hoping that that uh, that two by two plot of land has a very large tree right in the middle of it, so I can build a tree house and live on my land. So I think for your tartan. I've been think I put a lot of effort into this, so don't <laughs> don't don't get mad at me right away. Uh, I think for your tartan, um, you do like the rainbow colors. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think that would look really. You know, it's it's very very uh, um, biblical. It's very biblical. Inclusive. And, uh, it's inclusive. Yes. <laughs> it's in, yeah. It's very biblical. So I would I would say that would be good. Mike is losing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'll, man! I'll get you a. I'll I'll, uh, I'll draw one up for you so you have it, and I'll send it to you. So that way, if you want to, you know, do it. I just need to do one with Vic and a kill. Can't believe I'm already getting shit from the plebes, lesser people. I tell you, <laughs> yes. close smoke. <laughs> we're gonna. We're all gonna hang my laird. <laughs> you better oh, you better watch good. it <laughs> you can right, use the marine on. corps tartan the marine corps was the only service who's ever actually been officially issued a tartan you know so Correct. i can get you the history on that so but i also right. married into clan forbes uh like oh. forbes magazine so my wife right. is actually clan forbes okay uh, so you can use that uh, one the whole joke was from my neighbor is that she bought me the land because I take my wife's heritage much, much, much more serious than she does. Okay. Ah. Like I, I did all the research. I looked into mm -hmm. the genealogy of it. I looked into mm -hmm. the heraldry of it. We go, we're actually conveners. So we're certified conveners for clan Forbes. So any, mm -hmm. anytime you see like a, uh, like a tattoo that we all used to go to, you mm -hmm. know, or perform in or any type of Scottish festival, my wife right. and I can convene the clan. We can call the clan and convene the clan at any gathering. So we're official okay. and bona fide and everything. Okay. That's cool. It is pretty cool. I meet a lot of really cool people. We go down to the uh we go up to the Charleston games every year. I think mm -hmm. I'm gonna start going down to the Savannah games uh this coming up year. So uh we'll do probably two, maybe three a year and call it quits, but it's it's fun. I mean you get to drink scotch starting at nine o'clock in the morning. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, technically you could do that anytime. Oh yeah, but you know when you're doing a kill, it's it's much more fun. <laughs> and usually it's the tents safe. are around the uh, the athletic field, so you get to watch guys and throwing capers and bales of hay and hammer tosses, and the girls do. Yeah. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. So I I got the uh, Marine Corps tartan when we went to uh, Estes Park uh, on a band trip, you know, and uh, so I uh, I jumped out of uniform and put my kilt on. And uh, and then we went horseback riding. So, highly recommend it. Highly recommend horseback riding in a kilt with skivvies. With skiv, well, I don't remember if I had skivvies. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, he had his green, he had his green silkies on. So that was skivvies optional, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just silkies. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know if you can see that. Very good. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, they're just being a kilt. <laughs> Which kilt is that? Actually, it's just, nice a, it's just the legs. A, thank you. Thank you for noticing. Don't forget uh, to it's wear just a, your. Uh, it's a black something? utility kilt. Uh, what? I said, did you forget to wear your socks? They, no, they're they not very high. Or you're just showing leg. You're trying to. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Touche. Trying to get a little sun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So when you guys set that up, Vic, do you have like a POD each day? What uniform to wear? I mean, do you like? Well, it's only one day, so yeah, sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uniform of the day is whatever kill you want. Like, <laughs> yeah. Whatever you got. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. We, uh, That's yeah, I even bought the girls' uh, uh, kilts and everything. Um, they wore them for a little while. 
they gave up on it. So my wife is actually Clan Fordyce. It's her actual clan, but the the Clan Fordyce is a sept or a sub clan of Clan Forbes. Uh, and when we were out at the Pleasanton games out on the West Coast, I went to the uh, the Forbes tent uh, and I saw in the back that Fordyce was one of their septs. And I said, "Hey, so uh, how do how do I find out how Fordyce is like related to or a part of Forbes?" She goes, "I don't know, but you could call Twenty uh, Third Lord Malcolm Forbes and ask him. Like, call him." She goes, yeah, you probably give him an email. Just send 23rd Lord Malcolm Forbes an email. Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> but so fast forward like 15 years, um, and we had a conveners meeting, and 23rd Lord Malcolm Forbes gets on the, the Zoom call with us. And uh, apparently in all of the world, there are only 10 conveners for Clan Forbes, and I'm one of them. Or Amy and I, what? think clear. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he knew me by name. <laughs> Get out of town, man. Yeah, he knew me by name. <laughs> and I, I said, so, uh, you know, I told him the backstory. I was like, you know, I was at this, uh, you know, tattoo in uh, California. And, uh, you know, the, the convener there. Uh, and he goes, oh, yeah, Sarah or whatever her name was. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. That, that's her. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah. I, I, I said, she, she said that you would know how, you know, uh, Fordyce is a sept of Forbes. And he goes. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, so this would be like equivalent to the commandant and his MEF commanders, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that. yeah. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. You know, you know who we need to have on here for real? <laughs> you know who we need to have on here for real? This is serious. We need to have the commandant on here. Have him tell his story. Like have, have him come on and tell tell like from a lieutenant or whatever on like what was his path, what happened, what My were the good story. things, bad things that he remembers. <laughs> like the heart attack. Yes, with, with, <clears throat> with, with you, yeah. yes, Andrew, but not with all of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think with all of y'all, y'all ask some good questions. Uh, no. I don't know. I can't control them. I don't know, sir. Get get any of the the the, the recently passed the commandants, you know, Hagee or uh, you know, or uh, I don't know any of them. Amos I'm best or awesome. Jones. The what? See, if I had gone to Modern Day Marine last week in DC, like I was supposed to, and I should have just gone and screwed my dad. <laughs> But just I should have gone. And Sergeant Major came up to the display that Janine Franz has up there. I should have just gone and networked, guys. I should have gone. So well, that's Damn the it. new Sergeant Major Ruiz. Is that his name? Um, no, yeah, he was there. He yep, he was there and saw all the stuff. And because my display, I in my camis, Janine has my camis, and she's got like Patty Crimmins, you know, stuff oh, and yeah. Stacy Crowler stuff, all that stuff. And um, but he was there, walked around the display and everything. I should have. I, I wanted to go and network. I've got to start networking, but I'm going to do it. Damn it, Krista. You had one job. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, I just, you know, but he was there. We was there and walked around. And... I think the commandant was walking around there. too. He probably was at MDM down in D.C. Yeah. At the at the expo. Yeah. It's, uh, that's the helicopters here on the Shern. They've decided to come out and uh, say hi. You know that's what? The sounds of, that's the sound of freedom. Dark. That's what I was going to say. I got counsel <clears throat> when I was here. Do you, do you know what uh, soldiers call helicopters? Lejeune? No. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> 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 Got inspired. Those soldiers here Scott to defend inspired. themselves. But it is funny. He, well, then you need to find a soldier to bring on next week. Yeah. <laughs> I met a guy. I met a guy out here. Uh, he's an older gentleman, retired. He's an officer at some point. Uh, I know he's at least a lieutenant. He didn't say what he retired as, but uh, um, so I'm sitting on the beach with the girls, and he walks up, just stranger out of nowhere. He just walks <clears> up. To he's like, "Hey, um." Uh, you do you mind uh, uh, keeping an eye on me? I'm like, oh, sure, man. Yeah, I got you. Whatever. You know, he's an older, older gentleman. You know, I know I got some gray, but he was way more gray. 
And uh, I was like, yeah, I'll watch you. What are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm going to swim out a little ways. I just want to have some eyes on me. My wife isn't here or whatever. Here's my boy, you know, okay, can you keep an eye on him too? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I can babysit. Hey, I'm sure. I, I got nothing else to do. I'm just sitting here watching my kids. And uh, so he goes out, man. And when he goes out, he goes out. He's gone for like 20 minutes trying to fight these waves. And, but he was doing it, man. He, he kicked butt, went all the way out, did his thing, came back. He started talking to me. And, and he's like, all right, I'm going to go out again. I'm like, all right, man, do your thing. And he, he did it like three times. Yeah. He went so far. Yep. I went, one time he come back, he's like, I got a little worried. I was like, what would you get worried about? He's like, well, I hit, I hit this really warm patch. And then all of a sudden it was a really cold patch. And he kept thinking, um, are there any dorsal fins around me? <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude, I got nothing. But I haven't heard of any shark attacks here. So I think you're okay. <laughs> Might have been a rip current. <laughs> yeah. Could have been. Uh, at, at Onslow, right? At Onslow, yeah. 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 Too many rip currents there. Too many people yeah, have, have been taken out there. <clears throat> I remember not too long ago, there was, uh, I think it was a couple of sailors in a Marine was swimming and, and one of the sailors got uh, taken out and they couldn't find him. Uh, took several days. I mean, they eventually found him. We used to him. get, when I was stationed there uh, from 2007 to 13, mm -hmm. you know, the 101 days of, of summer and I became a safety officer while I was there. So we'd always get like the guest speakers and stuff. And then we had, there was maybe two or three of them that had family members. Like one guy had his, his teenage son, I guess was drowned out there from a rip current. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, to, I mean, that's all I ever heard about. So I was like, yeah, we ain't, <laughs> we're not going swimming out there. We can go wade in the water and stay pretty close you know because they i mean they they had some good spots where you know you could go so far out i guess like with the kids and stuff and it, you know was waist deep or, or shallower so <clears throat> my, guy, my younger one taylor she's like i don't know if she even knows what fear really is um, <laughs> yeah. so, there are many a times that i'm like okay you need <laughs> to come a little closer to shore because that's a long ways for me to go uh so, yeah, once or twice I've had to have that conversation. And she tends to forget, like, probably like me when I was younger. I tend to forget things. Can be well, if you're like me, Andrew, I'm not <clears> – <throat> I can swim enough to swim and do what I have to do. But when it came to our kids and they get out there, all of a sudden my wife was a, you know, a competitive, swim, competitive swimmer and – you know, did lifeguarding and all that. And she'd go running. I'm, I'm, you know, one of the kids would be, and I'm like, you need to get him. I'm like, I can't do shit. I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> you know, she, I got nothing. She, she go run out and, you know, I watched her bring when we were in Albany. She was a, a lifeguard on base here. When we were at Albany the first time before she went to nursing school. And, I remember being at the pool and, you know, there'd be 200 and some pound Marine jump in the pool and all of a sudden magically they'd jump in, but they couldn't swim. And I watched her jump in the pool and drag somebody out, you know, and, you know, it was one in particular, he, you know, was going down and she went down to get him and he, she got him back to the top and he started fighting mm -hmm. and, you know, he, he was taking her down, and she, she took his ass all the way to the bottom of the pool. Yeah, that's the quickest way to get somebody off. Yeah, and then got back up and then, like, did something like that and drug him to the side. And I'm like, I'm like, how the hell do you do that? She goes, well, that's my job. And she goes, you couldn't do it? I was like, hell no, I didn't let his ass drown. I was just <laughs> <laughs> like, no, because I couldn't drug him out of there, you know. You're lucky That's, if I can. I mean, I can swim and I can do all that, but don't depend on me to be, you know, if one of our kids, I'd be like, throw him out of the water while I was going down. I mean, <laughs> you know, you know, don't, don't expect me to do what he's going to do. 
that's that's me. I can I can swim <laughs> to save myself. I can tread water, but as soon as I that's where I always that that was the, my one weakness is I could not pass was trying to save or drag somebody else through the pool during swim claw and stuff. I just well, I was, I couldn't do it. I I was actually a McQuist and everything. Uh, yeah. Vic, you did McQuist, didn't you? I tried. Um, I went back when they had four levels. Uh, four four levels. Yeah, uh, yeah, four. I, yeah, yeah, four. I went to now, I went to yeah. two. I think two. Uh, it, it was yeah, four through two. Uh, I made it to like uh, two, uh, which involved the uh, the rescues. Uh, but uh, I could uh, nobody, none of the band officers would ever give me time to go to the McQuiz course. Oh, it's just too much time. We just, we just can't let you go for that long, bitch. It's like two weeks. Come on, fucking stingy assholes. But yeah, it was. Uh, You're not that important. I mean, I know, right? <laughs> play I mean, you are. Anybody can play drums. Any monkey can slap plates together. Come on. I yes. Mean, I mean, you are now, You're my safe. laird. But. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, some recognition. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if women can do it. Not nothing against the guys. You guys are more muscular. You think have, women are more fatty? We got more fat lip on us. <laughs> no, I don't stop. know if you got anything on me, Krista. I'm just saying I we have that. a tendency to float easier. Women do float, you know, because we float. are more lymphier, fatter, just fatter. Fine. Yeah, I'm a floater. <laughs> It, yeah, I'm it took a very me, good floater. It took huh? me a long time to find my natural buoyancy. Yeah. It took me a long time because I, like Vic was saying, I was only, I think I was a three majority of my career. And then sorry, I'm sorry, Aaron. Towards, <laughs> towards the end, towards the end is whenever I was able to, to move on up, I think to two. Right. And then they, they came out with the, with the three levels, the basic, intermediate, and advanced. And I, I went oh. to intermediate. But I didn't go past that. I was there when they tested all that. So I was at the swim tank yeah. when they were like, okay, we're going to do the the basic, intermediate, and advanced. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were kind of the pilot. Uh, they came to MCRD and they did the pilot on it and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was very interesting. I was uh, I I was great, in, great I, stories from the swim tank. I bet. <laughs> I bet. I have I a was, really uh, funny story. Go ahead, Aaron. Well, no, I, he was just talking about being a pilot. I was in sergeant's course when they did a pilot for the CFT. <laughs> they made that's when we had to run the whole thing in flak and Cavalar with sappies, and I was like, I was dead. I was like in the best shape of my life back then. I was, I was like two ninety seven. I didn't have a three hundred PFT, but I was like two ninety seven, two ninety eight PFT, and they dang near killed me. Fantastic. I'm glad they wised up. I mean, too. Do that anymore, I would actually. <laughs> yeah. Do that, right? yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, we were living it. in, yeah. I want to tell y'all a story. We were living in Hawaii and um, I went off, there's this little back, I mean, back little like um, shopping area, old store. There's a man that used to cut my hair out there and he'd do my perms and he was an old Vietnam vet. His name was Sergio and he had like 80s hair, thick, thick, luscious hair. <laughs> And he was dark skinned, had dark, thick hair. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what his ethnicity was, if he was Filipino or something or um, Hispanic. But he would do my hair all the time. He'd massage my neck. And I was out there for several hours, you know, when you do my hair. But it was always warm, hot day. We would be out there talking. And he and I were talking one day. And um, I was always out there for several hours, like I said. But he, we were talking. And he was talking about when he was stationed um, in Okinawa at one time. And he would, we we're talking about going out to Camp Schwab because when that's where we would go up to Camp Schwab to do our rifle range, right? So he was remembered being out there during Vietnam at some point, and they were there for R and R. And he'd gone out there, and he goes, you know, we're out there on the beach one afternoon, and we're all sitting out there hanging out. And he goes, and I had this friend, and he got out there, and we were sitting out there. We'd all had hamburgers and hot dogs. We're all just chilling, doing whatever one afternoon. And one of my friends, my buddy, he goes, I don't remember his name. Like, we called him Smiley or something. And he got out there, and he's on this pink floaty. And he was, we are all come back in, and he was out there just waving and waving. We're all waving back at him. We were all really toasted and drunk and everything. And he was out there just waving on his pink floaty. And we, we were waving. We didn't know what he was doing. He goes, so the next day, we all go back. And the next morning, we're all at mustard at 0730. And they're like, where's Smiley? He's not freaking here. We don't know where Smiley oh is. But he's, he's, he's AWOL. He's not here. 
So we go back, yeah. we look out, and he's not there. So they go back out, they're looking around. They actually send out a chopper to look for this guy. They find him. He's halfway to the south. He's in the middle of the South China Sea, halfway to China. Oh my but God. But they found this guy. He was alive on his freaking pink float. Yeah, he was asking for help. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was waving, trying to get their attention. But he was Help just me. telling me about this story on his pink floaty, and he was scared shitless. Um, Sergio said he was so scared. He was just like, I'm scared for you guys. But he got scared because it was pitch black. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ark started circling. He said he was scared, more scared than he'd ever been in his life, you know. But he was on that little pink floaty out there, scared to death. But uh, I just remember him telling me that story. I'm just sitting there getting my hair done going. You know, but so the he, story he begs the question, Krista. Begs the question. Okay. Do you have huh? any pictures of you at a prom or the print or whatever? I, you're there. I was <laughs> just going to ask that. I was Where's, just going to ask that. What's the question oh, well, of me doing Krista what? Krista at a perm. Oh, my perm. Yeah. Perm. yeah, let's see who Krista at the perm. <laughs> I have an old ID card with me with my curly perm. You'll have to see I it. I was but, just going to uh, ask that. Yeah. So, uh, no. I mean, let's focus on what's important, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you guys, I do that share the legacy, right, sometimes. And when I start off doing do share the legacy, I, I tell the new Marines how I ended up at Paris Island, that I was engaged to a Marietta fireman named Scott Dobbins, right? And then I tell them that the Saturday night before Easter Sunday, he his ex-wife of two years found out we were engaged, and she told him, if you break up with her, I'll marry you tonight. And he said, yes, he dumped my ass, right? And they're like, oh, they're roaring and everything. And I tell him this. So that was the Saturday night before Easter Sunday. And then two, um, six weeks later, I ended up on June 18th on the footsteps at Paris Island. So I do the whole talk. I talk about 45 minutes and ask questions. So I was doing the speech a couple months back. And um, it was a large group. It was like four male platoons and two female platoons. So I go through this whole thing. I'm the only one speaking that week. And we're through it. And we're almost at the end. And one of the females stands up and she goes, I just have one question. Did he ever marry the guy? <laughs> or did the guy, did, did um, the girl ever marry the guy? They wanted to know what happened in my personal life. They wanted to know what happened. Did she ever marry him? Did he ever marry the girl? And I'm like, huh? And they they wanted to know the end of the story of what happened. That was, you know, after all that, they wanted to know what happened. I was like, no, they didn't get married. Scott did not marry his ex-wife. And they're like, oh. Also, they were all roaring about it. Yeah, so. So yeah. Uh, that program that you do with that, uh, that's a really great program, I think. Uh, where you get to go in and talk to the recruit, well, mm -hmm. Marines at that point, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, I think so. Before they graduate. Yeah. That's a really cool program. It's kind of um, it's kind of awkward right now, I think. Uh, we've only got uh, three speakers right now. Um, I guess some of the, it's, it's changing, it's evolving. I think some of the other Share the Legacy speakers were – um, wanting to talk, talk to more recruits, more Marines. I don't have a problem with it. I don't care if I talk to 10 or 20 or 100 or 200, but some of them were a little wanted to talk to larger groups of people. So I'm just, you know, my husband has explained to me, you know, what if we had 20 legacy speakers? You know, one of you, what if you only got to talk once a month or once every two months? So I'm just, you know, I enjoy doing it. It gets me out of the house. And so. I think it's a good program because they, like I said, they ask questions. They're, you know, they they get involved. It's yeah, that's awesome. We share, we share the stories. Do that Andrew. Um, yeah. Well, you got to be at a recruit I'm station. Not there. Yeah. So that would be. I mean, I could zoom it. I could zoom it all. You day can be. Day. Don't you have a house on wheels? Hey, I don't know who you are, but you're throwing my name out like I could. I could just go at a whim. You better call my wife before you start talking that. I you know? know. I mean, I'm talking to a retired guy sitting on a beach, and he just goes here willy nilly. And yeah, she may have something to say. With hey, yeah. speaking speaking of the guy that uh, I met on the beach. Yeah, come on over. Come on over. This is way. Come everybody. Come everybody. Yeah, I am actually doing a podcast. Hi. I got my podcast crew here. Hi. Come on over. Come on over. Hi, man. give a hug. I'm hey. trying to give you a hug. Come on. 
Give me a second. I got my kids. I got everybody. Eric, here, this is William. Yeah, come on, come on, get in here, William. Have a seat. Have a seat. Uh, my wife would be really upset. I'm on. I'm on. Uh, 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 anything wearing a tank top. So you look fantastic. <laughs> you gotta forgive me. You look Sun's bad. out. Sun's <laughs> out. Guns out. That's so this is, is William. <laughs> I met. I, I told him the story of meeting you on the beach and yeah. how you went out and swam like two miles out or something. <laughs> and uh, it's fine. Hi. Uh, he, anyway. he told us how you fought off a shark by sticking your thumb in its eye and everything. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I, just, I talked to you up really two good. Two of them. Two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, get it right. Get it right. So, uh, my bad. I, I asked uh, I asked William if he would be on the podcast to uh, uh, tell his story, but he didn't realize that when he walks by just now that <laughs> we were literally meant, doing yeah. this, okay. which is which is fantastic. Uh, my uh, my son is seven. And uh, his name is Andrew. So Andrew and Andrew were kind of looking out for each other where I was out uh, shark hunting the last few swims. And, uh, you know, it worked, worked. I'm good. Thank you. Sure. It's moonshine. It's moonshine. I, I, I'm, thank you. I can smell it from here. Go <laughs> <laughs> get you drink it if you can. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, now, look, I, I went to Ole Miss. So, you know. I was, oh, oh, roll tide. <laughs> Proud member of Itapa no. Keg, so you know, woo, woo pig. My, 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 my drinking days are way, way behind me now. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, William in the army, yes, that's right. I know you were at least a lieutenant because you said that, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so, uh, kind of, kind of tell these guys here. So, this is Aaron, yeah. Krista, Mike, Krista. and Vic. Vic. Uh, this is my podcast crew, okay. And we twice a week we get on here and we just kind of, oh, so this is internal. The, uh <laughs> yes we record it and it gets published but yes uh, so right. but it's just us kind of talking about stupidity okay well i got it no um well look hi guys um i see aaron's you know in a patriotic uh, patriotic patriotic vo uh, like a vortisphere or something yeah he's got it he's got his uh eagle globe and anchor behind you can't see it but, yeah uh, and the flag oh, just the just the eagle yeah, yeah oh just the eagle i'm sorry yeah. well look since since it appears most of you guys are jarheads, I know um, uh, Andrew is, but but Kristen, um, since she's an Alabama alum, I'll speak a little slower, use smaller words. Because you know, after, like Forrest Gump said, you know, after playing football for five years, they give me a diploma. So, you know, apparently the part is really low. Wow, you fit right in. You should do this. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> your history if you don't mind oh no that's I'm, fine. I'm shotgunning you like it's cool no I, it's that's great um i um my as my son likes to tell folks does my dad join the army when he was 17 well i did back then this is uh back in the late 70s when you know parental consent you could sign and you could go off and be all you can be and, and do stuff so um by 21 though i had been to jump school and i was already commissioned under the old program so um, I could be, uh, and I was recruited to be a, 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 a XO. Excuse me, got all kind of. Bugs I'm sorry, it's, it's it's the lights. Yeah, yeah, and they're just drawing on me. So they I should, like you. I sh yeah, exactly. I should have worn. I got, some, uh, I got some. Hey, give me that spray. Real yeah, quick. Give me that. why? He needs to spray because the bugs are. Go ahead yeah. and spray yourself. And they're, they're, give it they're, they're, they're <laughs> I, you know, I thought I was going to have to worry about sharks, but the bugs are worse up here. So. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal. Um, by 21, I, I was wearing a Green Beret. I was on a Special Forces A team. as a Team XO back when they were doing uh, when lieutenants could be because uh, it was warrant officers and then captains or the team leaders. Yeah. So um, fast forward. Thank you. I, I think I'm just you're good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll have to rebathe if I do all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, so, you're good. Do your thing. And listen, once I get out of the water, I only bathe once a week, whether I need to or not. So you know, and, and it man, was, man after my own well, heart. Well, it was tonight. So you know, my wife says, "Okay, if you're going to do it tonight, you know, let's get it done." It's supposed to be an army thing. So back, back, <laughs> <laughs> back to the story. Uh, literally, um, I, I, I was blessed. I mean, we were kind of like the Peace Corps. We, we did mostly train, advise humanitarian missions in Africa, Central America, Asia, uh, Europe, Middle East, a couple of Gulf War tours. And everywhere we went, um, we left it better than we found it. So mm -hmm. that was it. My, uh, my Arabic is, uh, was good at the time. Uh, my Russian is better now. 
um, just because uh, I, weird, I, I married a Ukrainian woman. This is a Ukrainian. Uh, can they see the hat? Nah, you got to pull it back. You got to put it back. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. If you look closely here, it's camouflaged, and it's got the Ukrainian trident on there. So um, we are in Ukrainian solidarity support because we'd rather kill the Russian military in Ukraine so we don't have to fight them in Alaska, which Putin said he, he wants the Russian Empire back. And Alaska is only 55 miles from the United States. So better to kill the Russian military there than to, than to try and kill them, you know, or mess with them somewhere else. So Slava Ukraini. That means glory to Ukraine. That's a, so, uh, yeah. So his, uh, your, my wife. your wife's mother is here my wife's, from Ukraine, right? My, well, my wife, she, uh, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> I left, I left the army. I, I was, uh, I retired uh, out of the uh, Forces Reduction Act. So I got an early out uh, in 97. And so they they said, look, uh, you know, we're reducing the military. If you want an early out, we'll give it to you. I said, that's fine. I'll take it. Didn't really join the Bill Clinton Meals on Wheeled Army. So I was, I was glad to, to phase out of that, you know, <laughs> being, a, being a Reaganite, you know. So so uh, went to Silicon Valley, was recruited uh, to, to do all kind of cool stuff and um, ended up in Morgan Stanley management. So I worked in World Trade for a while. I, I left New York five months before the attacks in September. So mm. my office was 66, the South Tower. And wow. it, yeah, exactly. So uh, the terrorists permanently closed that office. So, but I left in, in May and in, in the attacks were in September. So Holy dodged God. that, spent a number of years in, in Silicon Valley, you know, being all I could be, helping a bunch of folks decided to uh, that I'd, I'd had enough focus on um, show me the money culture in Silicon Valley and decided that uh, to go on a spiritual uh, mission to uh, Ukraine. Uh, so in 05, I, I moved to Ukraine and uh, to help orphanages. So we sponsored up to eight orphanages at one time. Um, six, six of them are closed because they're in Russian occupied area or they're too close to shelling so the kids of kids and staff have all gotten to Poland and Romania uh, Moldova where it's safer but we've got one one remaining in uh, South Ukraine in a place called Mykolaiv not far from Kherson and um, it's special needs orphanages orphans oh, wow. orphans yeah so those kids be very disruptive if they left the staff recognize it so despite the the power where'd I go yeah, you're right. <laughs> Despite the uh, the power outages and and water and the and the and the bombs and, and the buildings around them getting shelled, the staff decided to stay on. And um, you know, by the grace of God, nobody's uh, been hurt or, or killed um, in that orphanage. Uh, wow. In that orphanage, so you know, praise God and save Ukraine. That is awesome. So, so, so that's my story. I, I was telling them how how I, I'm not going to be able to get on there. I'm just going to talk. I'm I'm out of screen. Uh, anyway, so uh, I was telling them how we met. Uh, you had, had walked up and you're like, hey, how's it going? Whatever. Hey, I'm going to go for a swim. You mind keeping an eye on me? Yeah. And then you took off and you were gone. And I was like, <laughs> well, all I, right. I, this dude I, is out there. Th thank you, Andrew. But I had two missions. I, I told him, I said, look after me um, and, you know, just say, look, if you know, tell my wife. I don't think we doubled the insurance before I went out. <laughs> but um <laughs> I said, uh, you know, just tell her that like, he went he, he went down over there. The helicopters are searching for him right now. But the good news is your son, your seven-year-old is here, safe with me. So, you know, that's at least that worked out, right? Because, I listen, uh, Kristen, I'm sure if you have kids, the pecking order is the kids first and then the old guy, right? Yeah. So yes. I, I, I know that. I'm present for that. So it's okay. None, none of which honest. happened. Andrew did a good job of looking after son so Andrew. We all survived. Yeah, I'm going to be so honest. I, when he when he started telling the story and he's like, "Hey, I'm going to go swimming and can you watch my kid?" I'm like, "This guy is going to commit suicide. He's, he's going to well, swim out to die." <laughs> <laughs> but he had a little girl out there. So Tia, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor yeah. was like, you know, the like good housekeeping uh, seal of approval. So I thought, yeah, you know, it, it'll be okay. You know, he's going to keep eyes on this little girl and my, you know. There's only two years there, but Kit Taylor's nine, Andrew's son is seven. So they were kind of placed. She is fearless. She's out there in the water. Andrew's, you know, wearing his little goggles, playing on the shore. So I figured we're good to go. We had it all covered. <laughs>
<laughs> it worked so, out but, fantastic. I, yeah. I yeah, mean, so I, I, pre- I appreciate you sharing your story and all that, but you realize you left your 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 son with a guy that lost his awning to his RV, right? <laughs> wow, that's why we started the conversation. <laughs> yes, I, as we were driving away from uh, Fort Story coming down here on Monday. Yeah, I ripped my awning uh, off of my RV. Well, I didn't rip it completely off. I messed it up and I had to take it off. Guys, but don't um, worry, I, he's got you covered. <laughs> Aaron, thanks that, for that. That was bit. my point. <laughs> But here's the thing, guys. I, I was just looking for somebody that appeared competent, caring, you know, on Man, the beach. Man, he's got the <laughs> Appearances are everything, room. right? Yeah, yeah. And I just wanted a quick swim. I just wanted to go out there, catch yeah. you know, a few sharks, you know, gouge their eyes out and, and bring back the body parts Yeah. Uh, while yeah. somebody was looking after my son. So that's, uh, you know, so Andrew here, he, he checked all the blocks. Um, I didn't know that um, that you know he had these other challenges. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looked reasonable. Uh, I mean, the beard, but I didn't see any drool on it. So you know, it was like, yeah. he spoke Yet. in, in, in Yet. largely complete sentences. So it was it was yeah. it was effective for me. My knees at the time. Yeah. See, it worked out relatively right. really intelligent. <laughs> that is wisdom inside of there. That gray, that's wisdom. That's all that wisdom yeah. in there. So, oh, it's know. something, all right. <laughs> it's all the gray hairs it, from the Marines giving me a hard time. I was going to say his wisdom came from learning the hard way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And yeah, I yeah. think he already said, if, if because of his age now, he's a floater. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what, Mike? I can't take you anywhere. He's a floater. <laughs> Well, guys, I am um, I am thrilled to be here. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you uh, for you know letting me in the little club here, uh, Andrew. <laughs> well, thank you. Going? This is Dan. Dan. Uh, he's named after Dan Daly, uh, famous Marine. Uh, who's oh, by the way, uh, uh, William, his grandfather. Grandfather. Thank you. On I my father's it. side. Yeah. yeah. His grandfather fought at Bella Wood. Yeah. By the way, oh, wow. we had an incredible conversation oh. about that today, uh, or I can't remember today. Yesterday, he, he was like a machine that. gunner in Bellawood and just had all kind of crazy stuff happen. I didn't know any oh, of this wow. until later on. You know, like a lot of these guys are so stoic, they come back and they just keep it all themselves. My father, so my jo- my dad joined the Navy. Now he had a rough time. He he was he played football at Ole Miss under Johnny Ball, oh, and nice. uh, was uh, he, jo- he either joined or drafted into. Um, the Navy heard the food was better. And, uh, it is. Went, it is. Went to Guam, and and it was a supply uh, petty a chief petty officer, um, and and um, that was his name uh, on the, the the you know that was his job. But actually, he, he ended up playing football for two years with the Iguana Flyers, um, you know. And his job was like uh, supply you know, in the morning and then go play football somewhere on the, one of the islands that afternoon. He did it for, I don't know how you do it for two years, but anyway, that was his, that was his mission. So we, we sort of sandwiched dad, uh, uh, my grandfather, you know, Ua, Marine Corps, Bella Wood and the whole thing. And then I, you know, special forces and all over the place. And, and then dad doing, you know, sort of the football thing in between, but we were all served, you know, whatever we did, we all served. And, oh, thank you. And that, that is the lost start. Like that's that sums it up right there, right? So you look at uh, families, you look at traditions, you look at the entire American populace, and how many of those can you say have the prestige that uh, William and his family has had throughout the years? I mean, Bella Wood, that's iconic for yeah. the Marine Corps, uh, you know, and then here he is doing special forces. He's out there freaking kicking butt and, you know, doing whatever he's got to do, I'm sure. Training and advising. Train, training yeah. and advising. We'll call it Force that. multiplying. There you go. There you, you go. go. I I really want to have you on at some point in time okay. to tell your story. I appreciate uh, it. 
but you know, it's, it's totally, I'll, up to I'll you. dress differently when I come on. No, you don't. You, <laughs> this is a relaxed atmosphere. We're just telling stories. Yeah, but I'm afraid how bad getting it. it, it, <laughs> it, it, it be carried off by <laughs> Zimbito. We can I was also gonna say do them. it by Zoom, so yeah, you yeah. can do it in your house. In the house, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll put the mosquito netting over me next time. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's what you're missing, Andrew, the mosquito netting. Of course, you don't I have an awning bang. Yeah. Hey, you know me. I'm missing a lot of things. <laughs> he left it with his awning back wherever he came from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, yeah. true. That poor awning. Guys, thank no, you we, for the opportunity we... to excel. Go ahead, Mike. What were you saying? No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying thanks for the opportunity to excel. Um, it, you know, God brought Andrew and I together on the beach, regardless of uh, our my son Andrew and the sharks and the whole whole thing. <laughs> um, but it all worked out. I, I got all my parts. Uh, the biggest threat now is not uh, Dan. Is it Dan? Dan, Dan? yeah. It's Dan. not Dan. Dan's a sweetheart. He's all these no seams out here. Yeah, yep. they got him. They got him good right now. Yeah, I, y'all see him. He's like, ah, crap. There's yeah, you're, you're you're dressed right. So. Yeah, I got a I got a sweatshirt on, and you know he's got his tank top on. Uh, so special forces right here. Yeah. Special forces. Who <laughs> <Who's laughs> to it? Yeah. Who? <laughs> yeah. If you ever saw uh, uh, John Wayne the Green Beret movie, uh, it's mm-hmm. kind of like a, a Peterson. Says I'm not a marine. I like my comfort. Well, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Break the suck. It breaks the suck. That's it. All right, guys. I love it. Thank you much. Uh, have a God good day. Thank you. Um, yep. Kristen, nice to meet you today <laughs> on the screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> knife hand, knife hand. Right, thank you. You. Are you taking off tomorrow? Yeah, we're leaving in the morning. But, but I, 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 re- I, I reached out to you on Facebook. So I sent you. Oh, you did? Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'll find you there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. Hey, thank you. If you ever want to need anything or want to chat about the thing, oh, it's all good. It's yeah. all good. Really. No, and I'll hit you up because you sent me a Facebook message. Yeah, yeah. I'll it's, hit you up it, okay. so you see the the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You can here. send it to me. Yeah, that, yeah. my wife will get a kick out of it. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Thanks, William. Thank I much. appreciate it, man. Have a good one, Andrew. All right. There you go. Funny how things work out. I was just <laughs> telling stories about him, and he walks up. That's a great deal. Don't have a bit any better. No. Yeah, he that's was how it needs to be. Other than this, <laughs> that's how it needs to it's be. It's because I got my light on here, right? I'm yeah. I'm trying to. It's dark oh. out here. I put that on. Um, well, we could. I mean, no offense, Andrew, Aaron, Krista, Dick, and I. We've all been wondering why you're not like that because you never wear freaking pants, dude. You you what? They're not like attacking your legs or. <laughs> we can only see you from here up. You never have pants on. So what I'm uh, used I mean, to being tacked below the waist. Oh okay, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So no see I'm huh? wife. I don't know if I go for that. <laughs> I love my wife. Yeah, what, which, which, which no seeing no anything. <laughs> no no seeing it. Gonna... Yeah. What? It's a no, no hey, seeing. I noticed earlier you were talking to somebody in the background, Mike. Who were you talking to? Is she still his back dog? there? <laughs> you were not talking to your dog. If you talk oh, to your dog, like that, we wife. have problems. Yeah. I talk uh, to my dog all the time. Yeah. But not like that, you don't. What did I say? Can you read I don't know. You put it on mute. <laughs> oh, no. I saw you, no. though. You were talking sweet nothings and shit. Yeah, I probably wasn't all good. I don't mind. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, the bald head, you know, Doctor Evil. Kristen, Kristen, I got a new name. Kristen, yeah, Yeah, Kristen, close. Hey, in case you were wondering, he's he's a little older and he had a hard time seeing it, but I have a hard time seeing it. Wait, does that mean I'm older? Damn it! No, most people have gotten my name wrong most of my life. It's Krista. Krista Ackler. By the way, not what your email says, but that's okay. Uh, I had to ask that's, that question. That's Did intentional. You, yeah, you had me fooled like it was cool. Just so you guys know. It's, all right. Uh, is there anything else we want to chat about before we uh, call it quits tonight? 
Not to I know. <laughs> I got nothing <laughs> else. <laughs> no, we just, just need to bugs see, everywhere. We just need to see the perm pick. We got to see the perm pick. Yes, the perm pick. All. We, we got to see the perm pick. Yeah, so Let's see the so, perm. Do you have a perm pick? I do. Do you? Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna have I'll, to see I'll, a perm pick. I'll I'll get it. Vic it's, is upset right now. Yeah. Once you but, figure out I'm how gonna, to share it, the next the right, next uh, Chelsea, chat. It. I'm working on my perm. I'm gonna get one here soon. Hey, I cut yeah, my I perm was, off. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah, you definitely <laughs> need one. Yeah. I cut my perm off. You can you see the tan a line. Of a haircut there. I did. Aaron, I got me a motivated. Haircut, I got me a Take motivated haircut. In, Aaron. Look at that. He doesn't look all crazy like I do. Oh no, it was it was pretty getting pretty bad. So yeah, I, know I said I'm gonna go ahead and get me a I haircut didn't here. At the time. <laughs> He's a motivator. <laughs> News operator. Hey, <laughs> thank y'all for coming on. I appreciate you. Uh, yeah. Okay, last party shots. Aaron, hit me. Oh man. Um man, I don't we can't top that. That that was actually pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that so, was good. So that was a pretty good lost start. You know, you met a guy today and joined the podcast, it's shared in camaraderie amongst your friends. Uh, but that's what it's all about, right? Meet people, that's right? Share in camaraderie and uh, live life to its fullest. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> that's it. All right, Is Krista, it? what you got? He trusted his kid. Trusted you with his kid. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this face. <laughs> Trust this. In the <laughs> That's what military bases do. They have that sense of security or false security. <laughs> Look at the other wow. Nation. False. Why yeah. are you why are you throwing false in my direction? No, man, you're good. You're straight. You're good. That. Yeah. Hey, Andrew, but Andrew right. admitted he's a floater. He could have gone out. He'd been like, Yeah, I wouldn't. I didn't, hey, I'm a floater. Don't you worry. I can float. Float with the best of them. <laughs> That's good. Oh, my God. He's got a great but, sense of humor. He does. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. does. He's a good dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pretty wild, man. He uh, special forces, all kinds of craziness. I, I hope uh, he said he reached out to me. I'm going to I'm going to find him on the face pages and uh, we're going to link up because I want to get his story. It's going to be fantastic. All right, Mike, what do you got? Other than well, the first thing I got is, well, yeah, you're a floater, but you're welcome. I don't know anybody else I would want to be a floater, but uh, uh, you're like my wife, Andrew. You have this ability to meet people and be friends, and I don't have that ability. Oh, you do, William. No, thank I you. Don't. No, my ability when I meet people, I'm like. Just get away from me. Just, you know, just, uh, you know, no. But my, my point is, is your personality. You're like my wife. We can be in the middle of, we can be in Ireland or England and my wife will make friends where I'm like, yeah, just, just go on that direction. Just keep moving that direction. And you, you have a, a God given talent to meet friends and meet people. And that's where you were given this talent and you pursued this to want to do this podcast. So, man, I, I give it to you, brother. Hey, you know? I got to be honest. Uh, when, when I look at you, I know that uh, what I'm doing, it's good to go because you're my friend and uh, I like talking to you. Screw these other people that are on here. I mean, not really. Yeah. Y'all don't listen to what I'm saying right now. Yeah. Screw everybody <laughs> else, Mike. You're one of man. You're one of few that likes to talk to me. So, but. one of few. I know at least five or six. Okay. Okay. So probably more. I'm, than I'm that. just saying. I, 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 I mean, I threw out some dates to come smoke cigars with you. I mean, I'm. Just, yeah, I'm sorry. That is true. I keep, I keep looking at them. I keep looking at them, but. I'm getting that time of season for work, and I don't know what to tell you because I hate to tell you a date and then like, hey, no dude, sorry. Hey, he'll show up at but, whatever hotel you say. 
I'm telling you, he is very. <laughs> You give punctual. me the right a money, punctual. and he'll show up at any hotel. Well, as long as, as long as Vic's paying, I'm not going to worry about it. I mean, that's fine. But, well, you might be no. screwed if he's paying. I but, but other than that, parting shots, I yeah. was uh, – my coworker, we were uh, – we well, we were working, but it's yeah. it's kind of a long working. story. But our, Yes, we were working. But the customer we're at, we work for produce farmers. The company we work for deals with produce farmers, but they had a big pond. So he's like, you guys need to fish that pond. You need to fish. So we were sitting there fishing. And we were, you know, we were kind of talking about some things. And, you know, he was talking about things going on in his life. I was talking about things in mine. And, you know, he's an Army vet, but he's six years older than I am. So not a drastic, yeah. not a drastic age difference, but... He stopped and he goes, you know, Mike, he said, can I give you some advice? And I was like, all right, Al, go ahead and give me some advice. He goes, sometimes you just need to listen to understand and learn. He okay. said, sometimes you don't have to have a comeback. You don't have to have something sarcastic to say. You don't have to have a comment. Sometimes you just need to listen to learn. Wow. And I stood there reeling in, reeling in, and I cast it back out. And I was standing there, I looked at him, I was like, yes, Dad. You know, and I, of course, I had something funny to say, and he looked at me, he's like, that's what I'm talking about, dumbass. And I was like, okay, you know. But his point was, sometimes all you have to do is just stop and listen and learn and educate yourself. It doesn't require, require your personal feelings. It doesn't, reply, doesn't, re, under, doesn't require a comeback. It just yeah. requires you to just stop, listen, understand and comprehend what somebody else is saying. Wow. And it actually meant a lot to me by him saying that to me. And it, you know, he, he actually taught me something. So. Dang. That's good to go. That's deep. Yeah. I don't know how deep it is. Cause I still haven't figured it out. But. <laughs> well, that's why I know how deep it is. Cause you ain't figured it out yet. Yeah, so, yeah, well, I, I'm not that deep of a person. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you're one Neither. of the quietest guys on the podcast. That's just my two cents. You should hear yeah, all, I, all his yeah. comments after the podcast. That's the, yeah, no. That's the ones that well, that's I mean, something you and I, I think, Krista, you or Christy. You know, you it's know, Kristen. And, Get it right, bitch. And, Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm excuse me. I hope that didn't hope offend my Lord Vic. But <laughs> you know, it was a. You know, it's. I I don't look at myself as being ex. You know, a lot of times being extremely educated to have certain conversations or to have a point of view on things. You know, I'll talk about what I think or what I, my opinion. Oh, I didn't say you're the smartest. I said you're the quietest. I'm just oh, kidding. God. Mike, I'm just kidding. Mike, I'm just Mike. kidding. Wow. I'm trying That's to be funny. Fun. He left. Good job, Kristen. Oh, Good job, Kristen. Man. What's her name? Kaylee? Oh, Is she still on here? Is Kaylee still here? <laughs> What's her face? What? What? Hey, the Lost Art Podcast. Creating divides amongst the podcast crew. Yeah. Oh, speaking of that, Andrew, you oh, didn't crap. start the podcast out with your normal. I hello, hello. Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Lost Art Podcast. The podcast is given a voice to our veterans. On today's episode, we're going to have a podcast crew. And <laughs> we're going to have Kristen and Mike. And Mike is not going to talk. We're good at. <laughs> We're going to drink some alcohol. Might be a little bit of moonshine. Might not. I don't know. 
I don't even know where it's at. I'm trying to grab it. It's dark. I can't see, but I got lots of bugs to keep me company. And that's in my mustache to save for later. That's why they call it a flavor saver. I'm a poet. Vic, we never got the end of the end of the uh, the mid podcast cigar review. Oh, I, was yeah. gonna, I was just going to say that. Speaking of the mid <laughs> podcast review, even though we might be a little beyond the mid part, Vic, tell us about this uh, this cigar that you might or may not have. What do we got here? Uh, I, honestly, I wasn't that impressed with it. Um, the, the, the flavor profile almost kind of tasted like, uh, I know it sounds weird, but almost tasted like, uh, like iced tea. Uh, it was kind of a little weird, but then, uh, <laughs> towards the back end of the cigar, um, it started to taste a little metallic. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't care for it. So I don't know what that, that, uh, probably it was a natural wrapper, but I don't know what that green wrapper was. I'm sure somebody more smarter than me and more experienced could tell me, but, uh, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't impressed with it. It was a, I don't, I don't care for cigars that get that metallic taste to them. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would, I would give it a solid meh. A solid meh. <laughs> Note to I self: don't, gonna, don't hey, smoke the barber pole. I'm gonna put it on mute for a second. You guys carry on the conversation. <laughs> okay. Well, I think I think we made our. I, <laughs> I think we, we made our just, round. We should all just leave. Yeah, now that now that he's gone, what do we want to talk about? <laughs> we should all just sign off. <laughs> we have to go. Hey guys, where'd you go? Yeah, let's just all close the cameras, but leave the microphones on until he comes back. And... There you go. How do you do that? Hit stop video. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Hope you very just. Appointed. He's taking a piss. He's probably taking a piss behind his RV right now. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> he's, he's seen his, a tree. Yeah, he's seen he's seen his opportunity. <laughs> you guys, this is so bad. Like children, <laughs> we're playing hide and seek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it comes back on. We need to be like that son of a bitch. I swear to God. <laughs> Truth be told, he could probably still hear us. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, he's listening to us here. He's yeah. I had, a, I had a picture up too. I could put up. Now would be a good time to look for that firm picture. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that was the exact same way as soon as she said firm. I was like, oh, we got to see that. <laughs> he was a funny guy. You're messing with me right now. All right. I heard you. You can't <laughs> pretend like you're all gone. I hear you. Hey, Kristen. <laughs> Kristen, you had one job. Come on. Yeah. yeah. All you had to do is beat yourself. <laughs> all you had to do is get the perm. All you had to do is get the perm picture and post it. <laughs> oh my God. Jeez, you're all Kayla. Over. Like yeah, we children. Were, yeah, Giggly. we were playing hide and seek with you. Hey, hide and seek's a good deal. Um, I almost killed myself. I put it on uh -oh. mute. I ran around this table. Of course, it's pitch dark out here because I don't have my awning with lights. So I, I ran around. <laughs> There's some plants that we uh, brought with us that my wife uh, loves that I tripped over as I was trying to let the dog in. And then I go inside. What did I do? They have the lights off telling ghost stories, and I tripped over something inside. And then I, I had to make a head call and come back out. So <laughs> I apologize. Let's just say the iced tea is going right through me. <laughs> Take your head at me. This, this is will be one of the goofiest that. ones we've ever had. So this is this right here is why people watch the show. <laughs> 
the lost. They watch the whole thing to get to the good stuff, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All we needed was a sergeant major. Man, it would have been. Oh yeah, he may have disapproved though. I know he would have disapproved. Yeah, actually, that depends on how much he had to drink. I think. If he was drinking with us, it probably would have been all right. Yeah. Stamp of approval. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, we went around Robin. Vic told us all about his cigar, but he didn't have any uh, good stuff unless he gave, gave something good out uh, before I uh, almost killed myself. I, I got nothing. I got, I... Very well. Nothing it is. All right. Well, as always... Thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. I apologize that it was so chaotic tonight. Um, but welcome to the new podcast, because I'm pretty sure it's going to be chaotic every single time. Um, that's my life now. Um, and you get to enjoy it. And you're welcome. But with that, if you're out there and you're struggling, and you need to, uh, somebody to talk to, anything like that, be sure that you reach out. The VA has some uh, incredible resources out there. You can dial 988, press option one. You can also uh, dial, or I'm sorry, you can text nine, I'm sorry, three, no. Somebody help me out here. 939-288. Again, you can text 939-288. You would think I'd have this memorized by now. I do not. Uh, or you can go to veteranscrisisline.net. You can click on that chat icon. You can get on there. You can chat away. Um, but any of those options are good because one veteran life's loss is one too many. And I care about you. My podcast crew here cares about you. William, our special guest, that was a surprise that happened to walk by and come up and chat with us. He cares about you and we all want what's best. So please reach out for help with that. To all my podcast crew, you guys rock. I don't care what anybody else says about you. I think you're fantastic. Um, to, all the listeners, <laughs> to all the listeners out there, uh, obviously, as usual, just like every single day, stay motivated and change your socks. <laughs>